how to create robots.txt file. In this video session, I'm going to show you how you can create robots.txt file, as well as best practices for using it for Google. When you're logged into your web hosting account, all you need to do is locate file manager, press on that link, then browse into your website root directory, usually called public underscore HTML, and press on file, as in create new file. Let's press on it. Let's call that file robots.txt. So that will be the name of our file. It's basically a text file. And let's press create new file. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. Then, as we can see, now we have robots.txt file. We can right click, press on edit. Now what goes in within this file? This file can be used for various different reasons, but there are two main reasons that you want to use this file. And that is to control web crawlers such as Googlebot to access certain parts of your website for crawling purposes. Each time user agents such as Googlebot requests a URL on a website, it actually looks for robots.txt file. It requests that file first to see what it can crawl and what it cannot crawl. So you can use it to control Google to crawl certain parts of your site or let's imagine you have a very popular or very busy website with many different URLs thousands of as an example then Google bot being efficient crawler may burden your server by requesting a lot of URLs In such cases, robots.txt file can be a lifesaver. So now let's go and see what we can place within this robots.txt file. Let's say user hyphen agent colon, let's put a space and let's use the asterisk symbol. It's on our keyboard number eight key let's press enter and now let's say this allow let's put a colon and let's go to the next line when we use this allow colon and we place nothing afterwards we're basically saying you can access any part of my website but if we use it, disallow our colon and put nothing else there, what would be the purpose? So therefore, let's imagine I have a folder and I don't want search engines to crawl that entire folder. Now I can put a space, put forward slash and say, let's imagine example folder. And let's put another forward slash. Now I've told user agents that I disallow them to access a folder named example folder. Now, since website folder structures can be very complex, let's do something like this. Disallow colon forward slash example folder forward slash and let's put the asterisk symbol there now what's the difference between these two 
In the first line, we're saying I disallow this particular folder. In the second example, I'm saying I disallow this particular folder and whatever comes afterwards. I'll just demonstrate what I mean. Let's imagine example folder. And let's imagine there is a, another folder within it. Another folder. And let's say one more folder. Because that could happen. And then when we use the second line here, this is what we're blocking. Whatever is within that folder, whether it's subfolders, whether it's files, and so on. We can also use disallow colon forward slash, let's say private file. Let's imagine we do have a private file called private file dot html now we can use robots.txt to block access some block crawling on individual file level as well so this is how we can create robots.txt file and use it but since googlebot is popular and particularly if you're utilizing Google Search Console at times depending on the content management system you may end up seeing server 500 errors and robots.txt file is a great way to remedy certain Search Console problems so now let's say this allow colon and let's do something like this same rule example folder now we're specifically telling googlebot not to access that folder do we need to use the second example no we do not but since we do have the option why not use it so you can cover all the user agents including Bingbot, Yandex, or all the others who obey Robot's exclusion protocol rules. And you can specifically target Google and Googlebot. Google has various different user agents. You can read the help section to learn the names of them. Furthermore, let's imagine this scenario. Let's use the allow option. How could this be of value? Let's imagine this scenario. Let's imagine in the first example, we use this allow example folder and place an asterisk. Saying everything within that folder whether it's subfolders or files, but in the allow option, I can say example folder forward slash Now you kind of get the idea, right? So we can use this allow rules or we can use allow rules. And in this example, although we have blocked Googlebot to access everything within that folder, we can now say, you know what? No, no, no. You are blocked from accessing everything. And yet there is a particular file within it. I'm allowing you access. So this is how we can use this. And you can just keep adding more, 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 depending on your needs. Robots.txt file rules can be complex. 
and at the same time it can be simple depending on your website. The best practices to avoid certain Search Console server errors is that let's imagine this scenario. Let's say a popular content management system such as WordPress has certain internal files that makes the website work. Let's imagine functions.php file. It could be the case that Googlebot may request an internal file on a website. It could be PHP file, it could be JavaScript file. If that's the case, and you end up seeing server 500 errors for a particular internal file, then you can, you can block that file specifically. Okay, I'll show you. Let's imagine something like this. Functions.php file is an internal file. That means search engines like Google should not try to access and index this URL because it's internal to my content management system. But when they try, because they may follow links to it somehow, and let's try and request it. As you can see, the server encountered HTTP error 500, internal server error, because it's an internal file. Correct? So now you can use robots.txt to say, hmm, since Search Console is showing me certain 500 internal errors, let me just make sure that I don't see them anymore and provide the relative path to that particular file Search Console is having problems with. Because next time, when Google requests the robots.txt file, it will see the rules you place within robots.txt file. So you can disallow at the same time, perhaps allow certain parts or disallow other parts. You can target specific user agents, such as Googlebot, or you can target rest of them, as in all of them that will depend on your needs and this is how you create and use robots.txt file i thank you for learning with rankia and i'll talk with you in the next video session